Here's a question that was sent to me. The individual is going to need to remove the supporting posts for a deck. And in order to pour a concrete slab under it for uh, so that they can enclose the area underneath the deck. Now, the first thing I want to do before I get started is point out that these are just suggested methods. They might not work for you. I also will not be able to provide you with beam sizes. You'll need to figure that out on your own. And for those of you who do not feel comfortable doing something like this, contact a professional and have them do it for you. The individual that's going to be doing this has a deck and above the deck, the posts are supporting a roof. So this right here is not a job for a novice worker. This would be something that uh, should be left to professionals. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and put some supporting beams underneath here first and then put some supporting beams to support the supporting beams that are going to be holding up the floor. So as we go around this, you will get an idea what I am doing. So we have supporting beams that are going to be supporting the floor joist along with the exterior beam. In this example, the supporting beam is on the outside of the building. With that in mind, after the concrete slab is poured, you'll be able to build your wall underneath the beams. Your top plates might uh, not go all the way across. You might need to use full length studs and then block um, in between the studs if you're going to be putting shear panel on, but you would need to check with your engineer for that. And we can install post or support blocks to transfer the loads from the beams above onto our support beam system. Take a look at it from above and here are our support beams transferring their loads down to the post down to the ground. And of course you can see where everything is set up to where it's going to miss the concrete slab. Now one more thing I'd like to point out that's going to be very important will be to create some type of a bracing system so that you can prevent this from moving. This cannot move. It's important to transfer the loads down to the ground. It's also going to be important, I should say just as important, to make sure that this does not move. And that's going to require some type of bracing system. And if you're looking for a little more insurance, then put some more braces in. And you can see here where we have a horizontal board that's tying in the support post along with the bottom of the brace here and uh, put stakes in the ground. Uh, definitely this stuff cannot move. Make sure that uh, you're building it on solid ground and keeping it away from the foundation. I mean, if you have to dig a 24 inch deep footing and you have this thing six inches away from the building foundation in sandy soil, you're not going to be happy. This thing is going to collapse. You might actually need to pour a concrete um, footing here. You might need to dig down below the footing um, and add longer support uh, um, posts um, that, that might not work. So you're going to have to, again, plan everything you possibly can in advance before you build anything. The last thing you want to do is end up with a structure that uh, you're going to have to tear apart at one point and move something over when all you would have had to have done was moved it over a few inches in the very beginning when you were thinking about the design. And don't forget to use building hardware. You can use screws, nails, whatever you feel comfortable with to connect everything together. And you can always use shorter beams or longer beams, whatever you think you need for your support or a combination of them. And you could always move the supporting system to the right or to the left. And of course, we can always make it smaller if all we need to do is support the outer beam here. The joist might be running in the opposite direction. 
then you could uh, something like this might work. Give you an idea what it looks like from the bottom. View of it from the front. And of course, I didn't build the support system on the other side. You're going to need to have something like this on the other side also. Like I said, the more braces, uh, just more insurance. Now, if you have a break in the beam, you're going to have to remove this post. Then you might need to add some additional supports. And those supports might need to sit on the existing foundation here. And of course, we're going to need to install our posts, our little blocks to support everything. Now, in this situation here, I moved the support structure to the right before it was on the outside. Now it's going to be on the inside. And I did that to give you an idea of how we would be supporting this right here if we needed to. So let's just say that these beams were mitered or we had a situation to where it was something like this. Then this support beam here is going to transfer the load from this one here. So this beam, the load will come down to this and then transfer to here. This beam right here will transfer to the post down to the support beam. So hopefully that makes sense. And then, of course, you can always have longer beams in here. Quite a, quite a system you would uh, come up with. And don't forget the decking should provide you with some type of lateral support also. If you have a deck that is uh, built with plywood or built, bit, built with 2x6 decking, something like that, then it might, be, uh, might give you a little more support, just something to consider. And that is the end of this video. So let me know what you think. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area.